Welcome to the Creek Road Baptist Pulpit. These weekly podcasts feature expository messages delivered to edify the soul. Now let's join Pastor Dave as he presents this week's message. Take your Bible and turn with me to 1 Samuel chapter 25. Well, today we come to chapter 25, and we've been doing a series of sermons leading up to Easter. Killing Jesus is what I've called these series of sermons, um, because we're going to get there to Easter Sunday. And of course, you know, that's one of those things that what happens with him cannot be stopped, even though they tried to kill him and succeeded in that. Of course, he's the Son of God, so he, the Lord raised him from the dead. The Old Testament, we're doing five sermons in the Old Testament, five in the New Testament, about saints who, or individuals who experienced something that either needed to die or could never die. We began with Joseph. Joseph was the dreamer, and the dream was one of those things that could never die. Last week, we looked at Achan. Achan was the thief, and the thief needed to die, and we talked about that. How does that apply to our life? And of course, it It's written for our edification, so it applies very well to our life. And then today we come to uh, Nabal. We're going to be killing Nabal today in chapter 25 of 1 Samuel. Nabal is nobody's fool. So not just going to be killing Nabal today, but we're also going to be looking at David because there's a piece in here about David I want us to see as well. But first, let's begin our reading in chapter 25, verse 1. And Samuel died, and all the Israelites were gathered together and lamented him, and buried him in his house in Ramah. And David arose and went down to the wilderness of Paran. And there was a man in Maon, whose possessions were in Carmel. The man was very great, and he had 3,000 sheep and 1,000 goats, and he was shearing his sheep in Carmel. Now the name of the man was Nabal, and the name of his wife Abigail, and she was a woman of good understanding and of a beautiful countenance. But the man was curlish and evil in his doings, and he was of the house of Caleb. Well, there's the first few verses of chapter 25, and as I said, Nabal is nobody's fool, because you'll notice how the Bible describes him, describes him as a great man. Look at verse 2. A man in Maon whose possessions were in Carmel, the man was very great. So this greatness now is described in 3,000 sheep and 1,000 goats. So just in his property, just by describing his property, he had 3,000 sheep and 1,000 goats, 4,000 animals in these herds. Therefore, if he had that much in herds, he probably had a great deal of real estate to help support that herd. Now, of course, they're grazing in the wilderness, but uh, he still has to have them come home every now and then, and he has to have buildings to house things for the herds, and he has to have people to work the herds. So this, is, this man is very wealthy. He is very well-to-do. 3,000 sheep and 1,000 goats. That's a lot of goats. I don't care how you count them. That's a lot of goats. And he was shearing his sheep in Carmel. So he comes to the time of year when it's time to take the wool off. So not only is he going to be receiving money from the wool, but it's also time for slaughtering the animals, the ones that need to be slaughtered for meat. And, you know, there's, there's not going to be long before they'll be calving and they're going to be having babies and there's going to be milk. And so there's, there's all kinds of things that's going on with this agricultural life in the home of Nabal. Lots of people, lots of work. There's a yearly cycle that's happening, and this is part of it, the shearing time. And so he's shearing his sheep in Carmel. Now, notice how uh, the Bible describes him. We know he's a great man. He has a lot of things. He's very wealthy, probably very influential as well. But it says in verse 3, let's see, verse 3... The name of the man was Nabal. His wife's name was Abigail. She was a woman of good understanding, of beautiful countenance. But the man, here's the second description of him. The man was curlish and evil in his doings. And he was of the house of Caleb. The man was curlish. 
What is that? That's, that's King James. Interesting word to use of a fellow. It means he was rough or rude or severe, especially in his speech. This kind of man is described in Proverbs chapter 16. An ungodly man diggeth up evil in his lips, and in his lips there is a burning fire. Well, that's Nabal. He didn't know how to control his mouth. He was ugly with his speech. He was rude. He was insulting. He was he was just wasn't a nice fellow. Curlish is a good way to describe him. He was just that rough around the edges. And not only that, but evil in his doings. That means in, in his business life, he was evil. With his family, he was evil. With his neighbors, he was evil. So his actions towards others is evil. It's not only that he has a rough spirit and he's, he's nasty, but that he treats other people that way too. So his language matches the heart from which it springs. That's the kind of man that Nabal was. But then you'll notice the very last thing that it says about him. If I was translating this passage, I would have translated that, but he was of the house of Caleb, not and he was of the house of Caleb. Because the house of Caleb does not match this action. This is, this is an outlier, the house of Caleb part. This is the only good thing you could say about Nabal, okay, is that he was of, he was of Caleb's lineage. That's it. Now, and Caleb's lineage was a good one. He, Caleb is a, adored because he was faithful to the Lord. You know, he was the only one of two who didn't agree with the spies. He was one of the spies, and he didn't agree with the ten. He said, no, we can go up and take the land. That's the Caleb we're talking about. He has a wonderful heritage in Israel. It goes all the way back to one of the first judges, who is his brother, Othniel. And now we come to Nabal, and look how far the family of Caleb has gotten, how far down they've come. If this man is Indian is any indication, hopefully he's just an aberration of a very faithful family line. So we see the man, how the Bible describes him. He's great, that is, he's wealthy, he has possessions, he has employees, he has property, real and liquid, he has homes, he has probably children, and we know his wife, Abigail, she's beautiful. Maybe Abigail would be considered, in our day we could put it in these terms, she was the trophy wife. So he has everything. He has absolutely everything. And notice how others describe him. So this is the Bible's description of him. But what did other people say about Nabal? Well, one of his servants said, if you skip down there to verse 14, Behold, David sent messengers out of the wilderness to salute our master, and he railed on them. So there, that matches, doesn't it, the curlish nature of Nabal. For he is such, skip down to verse 17, for he is such a son of Belial that a man cannot speak to him. Wow. So this is just how wicked this man is, a son of Belial. Now, this word Belial is an interesting word. It's a combination. Hebrew doesn't usually do this very often, but it's a combination of two words. It means Basically, worthless. It means unprofitable. No profit. That's what Belial means when you put it together. No profit. So he's unprofitable. He's worthless. Have you ever heard someone described as good for nothing? Okay, that would be a good translation for this word Belial. He's the son of good for nothing. Base, worthless, good for nothing, unprofitable, such that men cannot speak to him. You can't even abide to talk to the man because he's just that kind of fellow. Now, apparently, this idea of worthlessness and good-for-nothingness doesn't apply to his work ethic because he's got so much, apparently, he at least knows how to handle business. And he's good at that. But with people, with his character, and so forth, he's not. But the Lord's blessed him because of his work ethic at least. So we see all that this man has. Now that was the servant describing him. How does his wife describe him? Hold on to your seats, husbands. His wife says in verse 25, 
when she's speaking to David, she says, let, my not, let not, my Lord, I pray thee, regard this man of Belial, even Nabal. So she calls him Belial. This is a worthless fellow. He's good for nothing. And, then, and she's his wife. For as his name is, so is he. Nabal is his name and folly is with him. Well, you understand there, don't you? Just by the explanation of his wife Abigail, what he is. He's a fool. Because Nabal in Hebrew, now it's, it's a noun here, proper name, but it means in the language fool. And how does he act? Foolishly. That's what his wife says. Folly is with him. This is horrible that his wife would say it. So the Bible describes him. He's a great man. Tells about his character. He's curlish. He's evil in his doings. But he's of the house of Caleb. His servant describes him as a son of Belial so that man cannot speak to him. And his wife describes him as a man of Belial, a fool. Folly is with him. So not a good guy. Not a good guy. Now, what we're going to see in verse 10 and verse 11 is that Nabal opens his mouth and removes all doubt. My daddy used to say that. He used to say that. He'll say, son, there are some people in, in life that you'll wonder what they are. He said, and then they'll open their mouth and remove all doubt about what they are. And Nabal, even though he's described by the Bible, by his wife, by a servant, we're like, well, let's give him the benefit of the doubt. And then he speaks, and you're like, okay. I guess everybody was right. So let's see what he has to say. Verse 10. Now, David has come. Let me set this up for you before we read verse 10. David has come to Nabal. And David, and we're going to read about what David says to Nabal in a minute, but I just need to set it up for you. David comes to Nabal and he says, hey, 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 this is a good day. You're shearing sheep in Carmel. And by the way, your shepherds have been with me in the field and I've protected them and you've lost nothing at all. And and this is a good day. Could you, you know, do something good for your son, David? And here's Nabal's reply to David. Notice what he says. Verse 10. Nabal answered David's servants and said, Who is David? Who is the son of Jesse? There be many servants nowadays that break away every man from his master. Shall I then take my bread and my water and my flesh that I have killed for my shearers and give it unto men whom I know not whence they be. Like I said, he opens his mouth and removes all doubt. So David comes and he says, could you share? I've helped in this. I've defended your flock. Could you give to uh, something? Nabal says, who is David? Now, just the fact that he says that tells us he knows exactly who David is. And who is the son of Jesse? How does he not know who David is, and yet he knows who his daddy is? So he knows David, he knows his house, he knows his dad, he knows Bethlehem, he knows the family, no doubt. Nabal's an important man, and Israel's not that big. So he knows Jesse, and Jesse went about as an old man in these days. So Jesse, no doubt, has a reputation, and Jesse has lots of sons, and Jesse is also a shepherd. So he knows David and he knows Jesse. He says, there be many servants nowadays that break away every man from his master. And what's he referring to there? The fact that David is running from Saul. And he says, well, David's just not the only one, you know. Well, there's lots of them that break. And how can I keep up with everybody? I don't know who this David is that you're talking about. And I don't understand about him breaking away from Saul and living out in the wilderness. And Saul's trying to chase him down and kill him. I don't know who this David is. And uh, am I supposed to take my bread, my water, and my flesh that I have butchered? That's a better translation right there than killed. This is the time of butchering sheep. And so he's the, the meat that he has that he doesn't want to share with David has been butchered for his house, for his workers. And he's saying, am I going to take the butchered meat that I have slaughtered for my people and give it to no, no, so that's what he says. Give it unto men whom I know not whence they be. Where are they from? I don't know. They're just a bunch of strangers. Nabal is a fool. So what's Nabal's problem? Let's consider Nabal's problem just for a second. First of all, he doesn't recognize who it is that has made him great. Now, in this case, it's David. 
David has protected his shepherds in the field. Shepherding sheep in the wilderness was not without its risk.